Hello everyone, my name is Sonny Cockett and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing fantastic. Today we're going to fix the update to do situation. We're going to update it in the front end, then pass it through to the back end and response it back to the front end. So, let's get started. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these lines of code right here and I'm going to delete them. Or not delete them, but cut them. And then we're going to replace that with an axials.put function. And we're going to do single quotes here and we're going to uh, post that to API slash to do slash update and then plus and then the data dot ID. So the incoming ID of the to do that's coming in, uh, that's being changed. Uh, then a response error function. And then uh, I'm just going to put the old stuff in here. So let to do is the front end portion here. So if it succeeds, it will do the front end portion. Otherwise, it will not. Uh, and if anything goes wrong, we're going to do an error, error, error function. And we're going to error log the error right here. And uh, that is going to be that. So front end portion is, well, the JavaScript portion anyway, is done with this. Apart from one thing, that's that we also need to submit the data. So the data is submitted a second parameter in axios.put. And uh, then we go and go to the controller. Uh, in the controller, I've changed one thing on every single one of these. Uh, and that is that I have swapped uh, or added this little portion here. So a uh, comma and then methods here in the route next to the name is comma methods equals curly brackets. And then in double quotes, post for create, get for read, put for the update method, which we're going to create now, and then delete method for this particular route. And this basically is a security measure that you can only do delete requests to the uh, public function delete. This function can now only be triggered by the delete method. So whatever request is being done to this needs to be a delete method. If it's anything else, it will not run. So you cannot do a post method, for example, now to this function. You can't do it now. And that's what I, why I've added it. So in the update here, we want to get the content, of course, of that HTTP request. And it's coming in here through a request, which is a HTTP a symphony component request. And then we get a parameter here, the ID, just like we did with the delete one. We have an ID parameter here that's in the link and that's going to result into the correct to do here. And now we just say the, the content equals JSON to code, sorry, JSON to code, and then the request get content. And now what we need to do is go into that to do, go into that to do, and set the name to content name, oh, name. And then finally, we could do a try block and a catch one, of course, with an exception, top one, exception. And then we can later do an error here later. And then over here in the try one, we want to just say entity manager flush, which is going to update the database. So we get the to do that is inside the to do repository immediately through that ID. We change the name, we update the database, and that's it. And then finally, we return some JSON, which is going to be a message later. Uh, uh, to do has been updated. Of course, we will create something different here later down the line. But for now, this will work. And now we can just run yarn and cord in dev mode and or you can do watch if you prefer to compile it once now. And let's go to our app here. And now we can update. So let's see first to do and uh, we want to say new first to do and enter and it didn't update. So what? Why it didn't update? Let's take a look. Here. Oh, oops! I forgot a slash here. Slash and then the ID and then so. Okay. So, okay. Try again. Yarn and core. And let's see. New first to do update and there we go. It ran. Now we can see that new first to do has been updated. And if we go into MySQL Workbench to check on the data, we can actually see it properly being done. So let's log in here with root. And there we go. And let's go to the video to do app here. Tables, to do, columns, or just to do, select rows. And here we can see new first to do. And it's, well, 
it's the fourth one by now. So let's see, we can update that to hello, hello, and there we go. It's updated, refresh, and now it's changed to hello. So there we go, that's the update method using Axios and Symfony. Very, very neat and easy way to do it. Like simply what we've done here is we've rewritten our update to do method here. We've replaced with an Axios put. If the response goes well, we execute the code for the front end. Otherwise we give it error. And then uh, in the controller here in the update method, we go to give it a route to the update uh, slash update slash the ID. That ID is going to be the incoming to do right here. And we receive a request and that request is the data. The data has a name. We set that as the new name for the to-do that's coming in. Uh, of course, the data needs to be JSON to code first because it comes in as JSON, but PHP cannot use JSON. It needs to be able to read it. So we use JSON to code to be able to read it. And then we update the database with flush and then we return a message. That's basically it. And of course, these messages will get their own message box later down the line. But this has been it for the update to do functionality and as well as the like little methods tag here, you know, for extra security. Now only these methods are allowed on these functions. Um, so that is how you do it. And uh, now next episode, we're going to be messing around with messages and that sort of stuff. So we're going to add a material UI snack bar. We're going to uh, write messages for all of these functions and anything, if anything, if anything goes wrong in any case. And well, you know me, I always forget to commit my stuff. So let's go and do that. Commit. And yeah, I want to commit all that. Is there anything missing here in the inversion files? No, no. And the last thing I'm, we created an update to do, delete to do method and created database tables and fetch the data. So now we have created all the backend stuff. Created backend methods, uh, backend methods for creating, deleting, and updating data in the database. Simple as that, commit that, double shift push, push that, and there we go. And wait for that to be ready, and there we go, it's submitted, push, successful. So that has been it, thank you guys for watching, hopefully you learned a lot, and enjoyed the, the video series as it's going so far. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any further questions, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Until then, peace out.